Maggie here at Grafton Barber TV. We are here tonight in the Grand Social Dublin, the very iconic spot where the last time Rebel Rebel played here, it was the sad death of David Bowie. The crowd is starting to form and we're going to now speak to the lovely Peter Quinn, lead singer of Rebel Rebel. Peter, this is a very iconic venue for you. This is. is where it all began. That's right. We used to play here a long time ago for, we used to play here a few times a year. And we built up our, our following here, I guess. And uh, the last time we played was about two and a half years ago. And it was the night that Bowie passed away, unfortunately. And we were sharing the stage with Bowie's guitarist, Jerry Leonard. So a lot of people, for some reason on Facebook, this big rumor started that Bowie was going to turn up at the show just to, uh, I suppose, just be around or something. Because Jerry was here, we, everybody got that impression that it was going to it was something that was going to happen so when it started coming up on Facebook everywhere people started to really think it was going to happen you know but as somebody said later on I think a day or two later a post came up saying it was a girl who said that maybe he was there and he just passed through on his way to the other side you know so it's got a really special sort of feeling about it for us especially going out now tonight to launch the 2019 Dublin Bowie Festival and this is the first time we've played here since that night, you know. So, Peter, you're a key player in the 2019 Dublin Bowie Festival. Well, I haven't been all that much involved since uh, the, f the first one was over because uh, the band got very busy and it was basically left to John, who had started with me, John Burton, uh, to do a lot of the work. So he carried that for the last few years and got a whole team around him and put it all together. So it's just gone from strength to strength. But we still play at it now, so it's it's a wonderful thing to be involved in, yeah. But you're internationally acclaimed, so when you say you still played it, when you think of a Bowie tribute act, Rebel Rebel is the name that everybody keeps coming up with. Yeah, we seem to be getting a great reputation because the, uh, the songs, my voice has always sounded like Bowie and I never really heard it until just I think in the last year or so I've started to come to terms with that and actually started to believe it a bit because I, I really found that hard to accept for a long time I was thinking it can't be like Bowie but uh, listening to some of the recordings now it actually does it sounds it kind of actually scares me sometimes how close it can be but uh, it's it's an amazing thing to be able to sound like him because I really loved his work you know so I'm, I'm just so lucky that I sounded like him and not somebody else like like Phil Collins or something. <laughs> I'm a massive Phil, let's come on. Yeah. I take, you know, great offence to that. And tell me, did you ever meet the man himself? No, I didn't. Sadly, I almost did a few times, but I didn't get to, I didn't get to meet him, yeah. Uh, he used to, li he lived in Dublin for quite a while. He was here 17 times, believe it or not. But I worked in Temple Bar around the Merchant's Arch and there's some pictures of him uh, that circulated around the web a few years ago where he was standing at just up from the Hapenny Bridge at the side of the Liffey at the key wall with his wife and, uh, and they they had kind of come up on the internet a few times the last few years. There's a little girl in the pictures with red hair and everybody was trying to find out who she was but I don't think they ever found out. It's a bit of a mystery but she's in a, a few of the pictures. But she's only about like seven or eight I think. And if Bowie was here tonight, if, if, if things had happened and he hadn't passed, and yeah. if you could meet him after this gig, what would you say to him? Do you know, I, I wouldn't have a clue. I'd probably try to avoid him, actually, because it would just be too overwhelming. I was always kind of terrified he'd turn up somewhere or he'd bump into him somewhere by accident, you know? And it was just one of those things that would be too big a deal, really. You know? I, I, I'd find it very difficult to deal with something like that. And talking about Bowie, what's your favourite track to perform? Um, I guess Heroes, because it always seems to just bring the roof down, brings the house down. It's amazing. It's it's such an anthem, but it's uh, it's so full of emotion. And when you're singing it, it's like you're, it's almost theatrical because you're delivering it like lines from a play because you're feeling what you're saying about the Berlin Wall and everything, you know, coming down, all that kind of thing. Like the kiss at the wall and all, you know. So it has a great sort of uh, dramatic effect, you know, and it just seems to work so well. But it's it's a, a song I love to listen to as well. So you were a singer before you became the lead singer for Rebel Rebel. 
Yeah, I sang for years. I always did my own material. And every time I brought my music over to the UK, to the record labels and stuff, they'd always say, oh, it's very bogey, you know? And that was a real problem because at the time in the late 80s, early 90s, remember around 92, uh, Bowie had been putting out material like even 95 I think the outside album came out he was really big around that that period and uh, like obviously he was uh, always very big and he was an icon but he was particularly big in the late 80s after Let's Dance and everything like that and he he was uh, an international celebrity he could go anywhere so to sound like him on your own material just would not nobody would be willing to take something that sounded like that and put money into it because it was already there, you know. That's a very double-edged sword. At the time, did it hurt or did you just decide, I'm going to embrace this and, yeah. you know, start a Bowie tribute band? I People all said it to me for years, but I never did until the recession kicked in. And then I was thinking we all had a bit of time and there was no real market for going out and playing your own songs in the pubs. Nobody wanted to. It just there was nobody there. People didn't have money. They were saving money to go to probably better things. So to do something like the Bowie thing made a lot of sense, and uh, it, it sort of pulled the crowd, you know, because people knew the songs. But to be standing there playing your own stuff later on to five or six people that were kind of helping you and following you around, it just it became a, a situation where you just got very tired of trying to flog a dead horse, you know. <laughs> and you say we talk me through your band. Well, the the bands that are with me now, they're all uh, really accomplished musicians, and they're all excellent, you know, uh, and brilliant people to work with. Uh, we have Mick Cavanagh, who's a really well known guitarist, and we have uh, on drums Jer Farley, who's a brilliant drummer. He's played with lots of people. All of them have played with a whole selection of well-known people over the years. We have Carl Breen, who does backing vocals and guitars, acoustic guitar and electric guitar. And Luke Dunford on the keyboards, and he's doing backing vocals with us tonight. And there's Rodney Pepper, who's on the bass. And what do you guys do when you're not being Rebel Rebel? Um, well, the lads all play with different bands, and I tend to just kind of keep working on Bowie songs in the background and sort of... Uh, studying them almost I suppose you could say and over the years it's just kind of getting honed a little bit more trying to find something all the time to make it a bit better Bowie had some amazing uh, not catchphrases words of wisdom to the world do you what one do you think is your favourite wow that's a big one well I think uh, after I've read a lot of them over the years and there's one that I I've heard a few times that kind of really struck a chord with me I don't think I really got it when I was younger, but it was that uh, the the greatest thing that you can learn or to do in your life is to love. And I just thought that was really brilliant. He said it in a much more profound way, obviously. I can't remember the exact quote, but I thought that was a really uh, amazing thing for a rock star to say, because you imagine they're much more destructive type of people in a way. You know, drugs, drink, hell raising, women, all that kind of stuff. but he sort of had a different side to him where he he was always on a spiritual quest he was always looking for answers to the big meaning of life and all that sort of thing so that's all in his music as well and there's almost through the festival we've come to realise there's almost a movement now of people who are reading the books he read looking at the art he looked at and listening to interviews he did to try and find out the kind of information or the secrets that Bowie had found out in his life you know the kind of uh, stuff that the big answers to the big questions yeah. January 2019 is the next David Bowie festival but this is becoming bigger and better every year and I believe this year you're hoping to get some Bowie memorabilia like some outfits and some you know signed records yeah hopefully uh, we've always uh, been trying to get different things but we've had problems trying to find places where we could securely display them and we have been sort of offered various things over the years but never had anywhere that we'd be how would you say kind of conf confident that they'd be okay you could put them in a glass case somewhere and come back and they'd be gone you know so we were looking for a gallery or somewhere that would be interested in showing them and what has happened is we've had other 
gallery installations tie in with the festival and they've run them like that. So they've been part of it, but they haven't been under the, how would you say, we didn't organize it ourselves. We just, they came in under the wing of the, under the umbrella of the festival, which was great. So in talking to people who have galleries and stuff, we found out they, they are interested in doing stuff like that. Because Jan January is a very quiet time for most businesses and most people around hotels even so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of uptake and people are saying oh yeah we'd love to be involved and stuff like that because it's a, it's a real downtime for for the city you know for Dublin he's an icon that's touched everybody from aged 8 to 80 what do you think about him that is such a huge following um, I think first of all the music is just uh, really strong it's, it's wonderful stuff. As you said, you don't really get bored listening to it, but he has so many levels in it and it's so deep. There's an awful lot of information in there that it makes it very rich and it's all very interesting, you know, to listen to. So it's, uh, it's a thing that I think uh, people, even younger people now, when they hear it, they go, wow, that's interesting, you know, let's have a listen to that. And it just grabs them, you know, and they start to open it up and they find there's so much more inside there is the whole story of, of Bowie himself and his spiritual quest and all that sort of thing. Peter, I believe when you're not on stage or you're not studying Bowie in your spare time, you're cutting a bit of hair in Stillorgan. That's right. So do yeah. you sing to the lovely customers in Stillorgan? Do you hum a Bowie tune or two when you're doing a, a haircut? <laughs> yeah, I, over the years, I just, I don't even notice that I sing. Uh, people say to me, oh, that's a great voice or whatever, you know, when you're doing the hair. But I tend to just sing when I'm thinking of it. So if there's a song on the radio and I'm cutting away, I'll just start singing along if I'm not talking to the person. And I and they, when they it's only when they say it that I suddenly go, oh yeah, I, I was singing. I didn't realise, you know, I'd just be in the zone. But it's funny how it just happens without you realising. You know? Naturally just yeah. coming out new. Peter, what are you opening with tonight? Uh, Rebel Rebel is the first song tonight, which is like our anthem. It's the team tune of the band, I suppose. Yeah. And so Heroes is your crowd pleaser. What's the other one that brings down the house? Well, uh, nearly all the songs, because every, everything we do is all just hits, really. Um, so you'd have Sound and Vision, China Girl, Let's Dance. All those songs are huge. You know, they As soon as people hear the very start, they just go straight off. They start going, hey, and singing along. And Peter, I know we're under pressure for time because you have to get ready and your lovely band are knocking trying to come in here. So to finish, our lovely audience would like to know, and especially me, what is your favourite Bowie album? Uh, they vary from time to time. I'm always kind of listening to different ones and I get really zoned in and then I listen to another one. And, and they keep changing. It's a constant flux, you know. But Hunky Dory, I think, would be an all-time favourite that I keep going back to. An album called Outside, which I love, 95. Um, there would be... The, the last album he did, the Black Star album, which I thought was magnificent, really incredible piece of work. And uh, obviously the hits albums are wonderful because uh, they're all the, the really big songs, all the ones we know and love so well. But uh, yeah, I think Hunky Dory would be the one that seals it for me. If I was to take one album from a burning house, that would be the one. <laughs> well, I wish that tonight you have the best look in the world and that you'll all be hunky-dory on stage. Guys, it's all over. We have just seen the amazing Rebel Rebel perform live. The fantastic Peter Quinn did a sterling, sterling job. Unfortunately, it's time for us to go home. My feet are sore, but I did put on my suede shoes and I danced the blues. Looking forward to January 2019 when we see what's in store for David Bowie Festival 2019. See you later, guys. Let's dance Put on your red shoes against the blues Let's dance To the song that